and today we are taking a look at the Nocturnal from Collision Devices. This is Nocturnal from Collision Devices, and if it looks similar, it's because it's heavily based and inspired off of the Black Hole Symmetry, the flagship offering from this company. The Black Hole Symmetry uh, featured a delay, a pitched reverb, and a one-knob brutal fuzz as kind of an all-in-one massive shoegaze pedal, whereas the Nocturnal takes a much more sleepy approach to things, uh, swapping out instead that fuzz for a dynamic tremolo last in chain. Contained in the Nocturnal here, we have a five control tape delay with some really great crazy modulation and really wonderful crispy lo-fi tape repeats as you crank that time knob out. Uh, on the right hand side, we have a five knob reverb with a blendable shimmer that has its own filtering next to a really, really powerful and useful color knob for the overall character of the reverb and up to 13 seconds of reverb decay time. And in the center, you have a two knob dynamic tremolo, knob one being the depth of your trem and knob two being the input sensitivity for your playing dynamics that will set the speed. Harder you play being faster trem and the softer you play being slower trem. Uh, it's intuitive, it's quick, it's easy, it's very responsive, and that sens sensitivity control will actually do a lot. And the, gr the great thing is, that is at the end of chain. It kind of occupies where that fuzz was in the Black Hole Symmetry, allowing you to really take your delay and your reverb and start to really chop it up in really interesting ways and create a lot of kind of complementary textures and a lot of interplay between the three different effects contained 
in the Nocturnal. When Collision reached out to me about doing this video, I was really thrilled because I had just done the Black Hole Cemetery. And if you saw that review, uh, it'll be linked down below. You know that I really took to that thing way more than I even kind of anticipated. Uh, I am typically a pretty big fan of um, de mono delays. Not always a massive fan of mono reverbs, but I felt that the tuning on that one, the character of that reverb was really wonderful. And that's fully on display here again. And that one knob uh, fuzz was bone crushing and amazing and really, really fun to play with. And uh, I found that the night control, this dynamic tremolo, is similarly really inspiring and offers a lot of really cool characteristics. I really loved kind of the kind of flexible rhythmic uh, guitar parts on the intro of that opening piece in this video. Uh, and likewise, I feel like the delay and the tr and the uh, reverb on this thing are very well suited to not just kind of drifting ambient guitar parts, but also massive kind of like lo-fi rock uh, aesthetics and motifs, as you could again hear from that intro. Uh, we put a lot of gain into the front of this pedal uh, via the Cornerstone uh, Gladio and really big rock and roll tones and I felt like this thing like handled it really well and reacted exactly the way that I would hope that something like this would for those kind of washy drifting heavy guitar tones um yeah this thing is really fun I love kind of dusty broken delay sounds I love a reverb that gives you a lot of control over the EQ I think that's maybe the most important thing to me in a reverb these days is uh, potent and powerful EQ controls. And that color knob, it really does have like a really well-designed kind of resonant cue that band passes through that, that kind of general EQ. Uh, and yeah, that night control, that dynamic tremolo is really fun. So uh, I think that's enough talking about it. Let's just dive into our sound samples, run through each engine individually, and then start to stack them all together. Okay, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain. Uh, I am playing a J Massis Jazzmaster with Lambertone's Ristretto P90 pickups in it, and we are playing through a Benson Germanium Boost, the Origin FX Cali 76 compressor, the Cornerstone Gladio double preamp, the Nocturnal by Collision Devices, the Chase Plus Audio Blooper, the Strymon's L Cap and Flint into the Universal Audio Dream 65, uh, which is basically my amplifier. Uh, from there, we go to the Pinstripe Pedals DISO Plus onto our DAW, which is Universal Audio's Luna. Uh, the L Cap, the Flint, and the Dream are all in stereo. Uh, if we touch on those later, you'll hear that stereo image, but for the most part, we are going to be kind of functionally operating in mono. Here is our dry tone, the Germanium Boost, the Origin Effects Compressor, and the Amplifier. Thank mm -hmm. you. Nocturnal kind of runs antithetical to how it looks on the pedal. Uh, over here is our delay, over here is our reverb, and in the middle here is that tremolo. But the uh, order of effects is delay first with these five controls, reverb next with these five controls, and then night, uh, our, our dynamic tremolo, uh, last in chain with these two controls up top. So let's go ahead and start things off with the delay, then the uh, reverb, then the trim, basically kind of going in order, and then we'll start stacking them together to create some really cool dreamy textures. Um, so starting up with the delay, we've got modulation and speed turned off, mix feedback and time at center uh, right at noon. So this is kind of like a tape voiced delay where the more you ex extend that time out, the lower fidelity your repeats get. <laughs> So the delay doesn't go to full wet, the reverb does, but we're gonna keep it kind of maxed out for a little bit right now, just so you can really hear the character of those uh, repeats, because otherwise this thing's pretty subtle, especially at lower settings. And so it's got a very kind of tape-like modulation to it.
we'll come back around to that modulation. Um, let's go ahead and play with this time and kind of hear how it goes from a pretty clean repeat to a very broken one as you kind of stretch out that, that delay time. <laughs> that low fidelity creeping in. starts to begin right around 75%. give that modulation a listen. Uh, the modulation in this thing can get really aggressive and get really kind of big and fast really quickly, but I find that um, you can use that speed control to kind of like, almost like wrangle it back in by like bringing up that speed enough that it can't actually get to kind of the min max of the kind of pitch modulation. So let's bring that up a little bit. Thank you. 
Okay, let's jump over to the reverb side of this thing, the Dawn control right here. Uh, this is a, a shimmer reverb, uh, and the way in which it differs from the reverb in the black hole symmetry uh, is that one has kind of a flexible pitched reverb, so you can kind of create harmonic or almost like atonal uh, pitched reverbs anywhere from uh, unity to an octave up. Whereas this, you have a shimmer control, which is just an octave up shimmer reverb. You have your blend control, which does go full wet. Your reverb control, which is basically from short to I think about 13 seconds of decay. A color knob and a filter. The color knob is basically going to be the uh, kind of band passy EQ focus of the overall character of the reverb. And the filter is a digital low pass filter applied to the shimmer itself. So you can kind of like fine tune in that octave up relative to your actual uh, reverb character, which is really, really handy. So let's go ahead and dig into the Dawn and give that a listen. We've got our color all the way up. So full brightness for the reverb, uh, full filter open for the shimmer, which we have off right now, but we'll bring it in. Let's, ex let's start off by exploring decay time, blend, bring in that color, then bring in that shimmer and start playing with that filter. And again, you've got full wet here. And this color control is very potent. find that full open is a little bright for me. But there's like a really gentle sweet spot right there. That kind of sits really nicely with your guitar. Again, you open that up all the way. versus that. Let's bring in that shimmer. We'll start in. We'll start by just bringing it all the way in. Let's take this back up to kind of full brightness, full wet, full everything, so we can really kind of like play with fine tuning these two controls together. You can already hear you're getting a little bit more of a fine-tuned, even with this fully open, a little bit gentler shimmer. Like full on, full everything. 
can bring that back a bit. And then again, finding the interplay between these three pieces is pretty crucial. And finally, let's jump over to this night control. We're going to start things off pretty evident. Depth is at max, sensitivity is at full. I have found even with kind of low output and high output pickups with this thing, uh, you kind of are at your best when you've got that sensitivity pretty cranked. If you want to really hear what's happening in a very uh, obvious way, there are good subtle settings, but I like, especially for demonstrative purposes, this setting. Oh, and in case you don't know what this is, uh, this is depth and sensitivity is your input sensitivity that will uh, adjust the speed of your tremolo based on your playing dynamics. Softer dynamics, slower, harder dynamics, faster. back. Let's kill that compressor so we can get full volume. It's subtle, but it does offer you a little bit of movement, which as we start to tie everything together is really, really cool and can kind of provide a lot of very interesting moments. Okay, so we've run through all of the three modes in this thing, delay, reverb, dynamic tremolo in order. Let's start to stack those and just kind of do some general sound exploration. I'm not going to talk a lot right now. We're just going to kind of twist knobs and dial up some sounds.
Okay, I want to switch things up a little bit for the end of this video here. Uh, I have switched over to my Josh Williams Stella with a Lawler Imperial in the bridge position. Uh, I know that this thing, the Nocturnal, tends to be a little bit more uh, kind of like ambient, pretty clean focused. Uh, and that's a lot of what we've kind of focused in on so far in this review. But I do really, really think this thing's great for kind of more washy, aggressive guitar tones. Uh, it's similar to the Black Hole Symmetry in that respect, uh, save for not having the fuzz built into it or having it be end of chain. So we're not going to do the full shoegaze thing with like a fuzz in this position or something like that. We're instead going to use the Gladio on right, right in front of it uh, as the same way I did in that intro song to kind of create some really, what I think are very cool, washy, messy, lo-fi rock textures. So uh, let's give the Gladio and the Josh Williams a listen, and then we will start building out kind of like washy lead and rhythm guitar tones with it. And that's how we'll wrap everything up on this video. So uh, yeah, this is my Josh Williams clean. And with the Gladio. And let's 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 start dialing up some sounds. bring up the amp gain a little bit too. So we've got... Thank you. 